let's see what's new in SinCity 1.9. This is version beta 1, so it will change in the next releases. Here I have the SinCity node editor, so I opened this panel, this type of panel. I create a new node tree that I will call city. And if I add a new node by going to the menu or calling the menu with Shift A, here I have a new node called terrain and we'll have more of this type in the future. They are simpler to use, larger, and right now it has no sockets, no connections possible with other nodes. The connections will come later when more customization will be will be needed, but at the moment it's, it's like a standalone uh, node. Here at the top you have a few warnings about settings in the blend file that are incompatible with the way SinCity works. For example, incorrect scene units, incorrect render settings. So simply click on the buttons here and you have the description of what these buttons do displayed when you leave your mouse cursor over them. The node UI is divided into several sections, ground mesh, water, trees and ground materials and the create terrain button. You have several terrains sizes from very small to very large. If you open Blender's console you will see the different steps each time you create terrain, you will have a different terrain unless you disable this uh, checkbox. And in that case, you have always the same terrain and the terrain will depend on the seed. So you can randomize the seed and it will have a different terrain each time. You can control the coverage of water bodies. Okay. You can also control the land above the water level. What percentage is flat and the rest will be made of mountains. All right. Here you can control the size of the waves. So this is in meters. So as you can see, the waves are larger and now they are smaller. You can also control the strength of the waves. And you can do the same for the larger waves. And you have here a description of the kind of rotor that has this transparency. Below you have the size of the wind effect. The wind effect is best seen at a larger distance. So as you can see here, we have the, the, the effects of the wind and it can be larger or smaller. We have also the strength where the wind is very calm or where there is no wind at all. So 50% means that the calm zones that are here or here will have half the waves relative to the windy areas. Then you have also the transition from the calm areas to the windy areas. So a very small transition scale will, will lead to very strong demarcation between windy areas and, and calm areas. Here you can set the color for the water. So you have two types of water, clear or muddy water. Muddy, you can control the amount of mud in the water. And clear water, you have here the natural color. You can go from the temperate zones to tropical or arctic water to water that is saturated with algae. Then here you have the intensity of the color that you've chosen here. And right now we can see that this color is unnatural. You can go from natural to slightly unnatural, to completely unnatural. Next, we have the populations of trees that are scattered over the terrain. These will be best seen in solid mode. So here we have the coverage of trees. The terrain must be regenerated every time we modify this setting. Then we have the tree density, and this control is in real time. Then we have the forest size. This controls the variations of the forests. So we can see better on a larger terrain. If the forest is 100 meters, we have the different, uh, we have the patterns of the forest that uh, repeat. And if we increase the size, then the pattern becomes less visible. And then we have the roughness of the delimitation between the different areas of the forest. So these have smooth transition and these have a rougher transition. At the bottom here, we can control the textures displayed on the flat areas and on the mountains. We have access to a selection of seamless textures. For the ground texture, let's use, for example, this one. And for the slopes, let's use this one. 